It all started when I first met her. Jessica was a shy, timid girl who kept to herself, always sitting alone in the back of the classroom. I didn't pay much attention to her at first, but as time went on, I couldn't help but notice her more and more. She was very beautiful though, and I found myself glancing at her from the side of my eyes. I apologized for sounding like a creep, but I just couldn't help it. There was something about her that drew me in, something mysterious and alluring. I was finding her so attractive, and soon I found myself wanting to be with her. I finally got enough courage to ask her out. She seemed very excited, and so was I. We went out a few times, and it was incredible. She was all about me, and I loved it. I could see us having a great future together. Things were good, for a while. It wasn't until later that I discovered the truth. She was a girl obsessed with me to the point of insanity. She would do anything to be with me, to keep me close, to make me hers and hers alone. And when I say anything, I mean anything. At first, her actions were harmless enough. Jessica would leave little notes in my locker, send me text messages throughout the day, and always find a way to be near me at all times. I thought it was a sweet gesture, a sign that she was all about me. But as time went on, her behavior became more and more disturbing. I started to notice that she would follow me home from school, hiding in the bushes and watching me from a distance. She would watch me through my bedroom window when I was doing my homework. When I would catch her, she would knock on my window like she just got there. However, after the first coincidence, I started watching out as I was starting to think she was watching me. I saw her do it many times, and I started to just ignore her to see how long she would be out there. One of the times, she was out there for four hours, just watching me. She would also text me at all hours of the night, even when I asked her to stop. I had to eventually turn my phone to Do Not Disturb to avoid her texts. When I would wake up and turn off Do Not Disturb, I would see hundreds of text messages asking me, why don't you love me? Why aren't you answering me? Do you think I'm ugly? Things like that. For a pretty girl, she had the worst self-esteem on the planet. I tried to be gentle with her, to let her down easy, but she was relentless. One day, she cornered me in the school hallway, her eyes wild and desperate. She begged me to be with her, to love her like she loved me. I tried to tell her that I couldn't, that I didn't feel the same way, but she wouldn't listen. I told her the truth. I couldn't take it anymore. The text messages, the stalking, and staring at me through my window. I knew everything, and I didn't want to be with her anymore. No matter how beautiful she was, I was starting to be concerned for my safety. And that's when things took a turn for the worse. She started to become vindictive, lashing out at anyone who she perceived as a threat to our relationship. She would tell lies about my friends to get them in trouble, and would sabotage any new romantic relationships that I started after her. All the girls were starting to turn me down because they knew Jessica was crazy. She tried to force herself on me, but I resisted. I managed to fight her off and call the police, but by the time they arrived, it was too late. She had taken her own life, leaving behind a note that said that she couldn't live knowing I was with somebody else. And that's when I realized the true horror of what I had been dealing with. She was a girl obsessed with me to the point of madness, and she in fact did go completely mad. And now she was gone, leaving me with the guilt of what had just happened. I never spoke of her again. I never told anyone what happened. But every now and then, I catch a glimpse of her in my dreams her eyes full of love and madness. I wonder if I'll ever be able to escape her, to live a normal life without the constant memory of what she had done. There was a girl named Brandy who was always known for her extreme love for her boyfriend, Josh. Josh was a popular guy in their school and everyone adored him. Brandy was always by his side and no one ever saw Josh without Brandy. They had been dating for three years, and Brandy's love for Josh only grew stronger every day. But Josh had a secret. He was getting tired of Brandy's obsessive love for him, 
He wanted to break up with her, but he was scared of her reaction. He knew that Brandy was not an ordinary girl, and he didn't want to hurt her or anyone else. He decided to keep their relationship going until he could find a way to break up with her safely. One day, Josh got a text message from an anonymous number. The message read, If you want to get rid of Brandy, meet me tonight at the park. Josh was shocked and scared. He didn't know who sent the message or what their intention was. He was confused but also relieved. He saw this as an opportunity to get out of his relationship with Brandy without hurting her. That night, Josh went to the abandoned building in the park alone. He didn't tell anyone where he was going. When he arrived at the abandoned building by the park, he saw a girl standing in the dark. The girl was wearing a black hoodie, and her face was hidden. She spoke in a low, whispery voice. Are you Josh? she asked. Josh nodded his head. I know what you want, the girl said. I can help you. How? Josh asked, confused. I can make Brandy disappear, the girl replied. Josh was horrified. He didn't want Brandy to get hurt or worse. He quickly turned to leave, but the girl grabbed his arm. Don't worry, the girl said. I won't hurt her. I'll just make her go away. How? Josh asked. Leave it to me, the girl said. Just give me some time. Josh left the building, feeling scared and uneasy. He didn't know who the girl was, and he didn't know what she was capable of. He tried to forget the incident and continue his relationship with Brandy, but things just got worse. Brandy's obsession with Josh grew stronger every day. She started becoming more overbearing, following him wherever he went. She even started threatening other girls who talked to him or looked at him with violence. Brandy even got in a fight with a girl for just looking at Josh and mouthing off to her. She beat that girl within an inch of her life when Josh finally got her to stop fighting. That girl ended up in the ICU, but somehow Brandy did not get in trouble for it. Her dad was friends with the local sheriff and got her out of it with a warning. Josh was scared for his life and the lives of others. He knew that Brandy was not normal, and he didn't know what to do. One day, Josh got a call from the police. They told him that Brandy had gone missing. They found her phone and some of her belongings at an abandoned building near the park. The police suspected foul play and wanted to question Josh. Josh was horrified. He didn't know what to say or do. But he was scared that the hooded girl might have something to do with it. He decided to go to the police and tell them everything. When he arrived at the police station, he was shocked to see the anonymous hooded girl sitting outside of the station. What's going on? Josh asked. The girl turned to him and smiled. Don't worry, Josh. Brandy is gone, and you had nothing to do with it. Just tell them the truth and we can be together finally. I will be good to you and won't treat you like that whore Brandy did. But she had an N95 mask on and I really couldn't see. The hood was making her eyes impossible to identify as well. Josh was shocked. With this new and disturbing information, Josh went into the interrogation room and told the detectives everything. He even told them that the girl was outside the station right now. The officers ran out of the room and looked to find the girl, but she was already gone. They reviewed the security footage and saw the girl Josh was talking about but they could not identify her. The detectives had determined that Josh was not at fault for Brandy's disappearance and let him go. A few months passed by and Josh was now with a girl named Jennifer. It was so great that Josh was able to find love once again. Jennifer was kind, sweet, and gentle. All the things that Brandy wasn't. She was so good to him and he was so happy to be in a good relationship finally. However, he started to notice that she would get really upset if he didn't answer her texts immediately. He just thought, she really likes me, and I guess she'll always be loyal. There was a girl named Destiny who had always been a bit obsessive about her crushes. She would follow them around, taking pictures and videos of them without their knowledge. 
and write down their names on every available surface she could find. Like Destiny and Guy's name, together forever, stuff like that. She had amassed thousands of pictures and videos of different guys. She would stalk them until she found a better looking guy that she desired to be with more than the previous one. But it wasn't until she met her latest crush, a guy named Grayson, that would finally result in her going all the way with her obsessions. She wanted to actually be with this one. Destiny was convinced that Grayson was her soulmate, the only person in the world who would ever truly understand her. However, she started out way too strong for anyone, but especially Grayson. She would leave notes for him in places he would usually go, professing her undying love and begging him to notice her. He thought this was some kind of joke. No one is this nuts. This must have been his friends playing a joke on him. Once, he accidentally met Destiny and realized that it wasn't a joke, and he was terrified. Grayson was not interested in her at all, and in fact, found her behavior more than a little unsettling. But Destiny refused to give up. She started stalking Grayson everywhere he went, watching him from a distance and taking notes on his daily schedule from morning to night. She even broke into his house one night, just to see what it would feel like to be close to him. And that's when she found something that made her blood run cold. In Grayson's bedroom, Destiny found a collection of photos and notes that he had been keeping about her. There were naked photos of her in the shower and in her bedroom. She did like to be naked whenever possible, but was surprised that Grayson was able to get such great pictures of her without her knowledge. If she would have known, she would just let him come in and take all the pictures he wanted. She loved him that much. He had been following her too, watching her every move and taking videos of her without her knowledge. Brandy was shocked and horrified, but also a little bit excited. Maybe Grayson did love her after all in his own twisted way. This made her undying love for him that much more. From that moment on, Destiny's obsession with Grayson spiraled out of control. She would break into his house regularly. She started trying on his clothes and cologne and even went as far as to dye her hair to match his color. And all the while, Grayson remained distant and would not just admit that he was obsessed with her too. This was irritating her. She was getting really mad and he was being such a selfish prick and wouldn't just love her. She was too nervous to confront him though and just let her feelings tear her apart. One day, Destiny decided enough was enough. She was tired of waiting for Grayson to notice her. She was tired of waiting for Grayson to admit his true feelings, so she decided to take matters into her own hands. She broke into his house again, this time armed with a knife, and waited for him to come home. When he finally did, she pounced on him, intent on making him love her no matter what. Grayson fought back, but Destiny was too strong and too desperate to be deterred. She stabbed him repeatedly, each thrust of her knife fueling her delusional belief that they were meant to be together. And when she was finally done, she sat down next to his lifeless body and smiled. Destiny was finally happy because she knew that Grayson would never be able to leave her. They would be together forever, just as she always wanted. And even though the police eventually caught up to her and locked her away for the rest of her life, Destiny didn't care. She had achieved her ultimate goal, and that's all that mattered. Hey, Spooky Sooner here. Um, doing this video because my other Yanadi video did so well. So I think that people uh, really like that subject. Uh, female stalker, stalking males. It's an interesting twist on, on life. So we got some Instagram stories coming up after this one. Some urban legends from the United States. I thought that would be fun. Uh, it was really interesting to hear about the different urban legends all over the United States. So, uh, look for that. Um, Halloween is coming up. Can't wait. It's a great holiday. If you haven't yet, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, introduce your friends to my content. Thank you. Stay spooky. But she was relent. <clears throat> but she was relentless. She started to become vindictive. Lashing out at anyone she...
she started to become vindictive and would sabotage that I started after our relationship had been had it um, one day Josh got a text messages um, oops. he didn't tell anyone where he was going not even Brandy when he arrived at the well don't say that that's kind of dumb when he arrived at the band the abandoned the girl was wearing a black hurdy hurdy the t- t- the t- <laughs> the police that her obsession finally resulted in going all the way with her obsessions <laughs> 